To build a network, let's talk about numbering systems. Because you kind of need to know a little bit of this to understand what you're looking at when it comes to networking. But let's just start with the basics and we'll work across the whiteboard. So let's start with very, very basic decimal. Everybody should have heard of this. And if you haven't heard of this, it's because you just haven't heard it called this. This is what we call a base 10 numbering system. Base 10, which means that we're using 10 digits. We start with zero, always start with zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you go through this and you got a ones column. And when you finish hit nine, you're gonna carry the one back, you know, go back over to here. One's gonna get moved over. And you're gonna have a tens column, hundreds column, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. I won't go on with that too much. I think we all understand this. So we're gonna move on. Uh, but we're gonna give an example of a decimal number, which is the kind of numbers that we all learn and understand and enjoy. So let's say 18, one eight. This means that we have a 10 and we have a 18, right? So then we're gonna have uh, 87. 87 is a good one. Uh, and so we've got 18 and 87. And I got one more I'm gonna show you because this one is hilarious. Okay, so 18, 87, and 255. Those are the three numbers we're gonna work with today. And we're gonna translate these into three other numbering systems. And we're gonna start with the one that computers understand, binary. So binary is a base two numbering system. And it uses just two digits, a zero and a one. OCD is kicking it. All right, so we got a zero and a one. Off and on. And there's a whole series of awesomeness that you can do with this, and mostly you can just count. That's it, zero and one. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one. So we get into binary. If we want to translate these numbers into binary, we first have to understand the place value of binary. And the place value of binary starts with one. The ones column, the zero and one. So that's numerical value of one. But then we move on to the next column and that is the twos column. And then as we move over, we get into the fours column, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. And then this keeps going on to like 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, and so on and so forth. Uh, it just it's place value. Now binary numbers literally consist of a long string of ones and zeros. And in order to translate decimal into binary, what you need to do is move as far to the left as you can on the place value scale until you can't go any higher with this number. So at 18, for example, we know we don't have a 128. We don't have a 64, we don't have a 32, but we have a 16, which leaves us with two. Now you're probably wondering why eight? Eight binary digits is effectively a byte of information. Each one of these ones and zeros is what we call a bit. So eight bits make up a byte. Just a piece of trivia, but that's why we're sticking with, with eight digits. That and something else will be made clear later on. So if we want to translate 18 into binary, this string of zeros and ones, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, is 18. Now let's do 87. We know we don't have a 128, uh, but we do have a 64. And if you take 87 and you subtract 64, it leaves you with, any guesses? 23, correct. So we don't have a 32, but we do have a 16. 16 subtracted from 23 is seven. So we don't have an eight, but we do have a four, two, and one. 87. 255, some of you out there chuckling, yes, you know why I picked this one. 255 is, well, let's calculate it out. 255 minus 128 is 127, minus 64, is 63 minus 32 
is 31. Minus 16 is 15. You get the idea. It's a string of eight ones. So 18, 87, 255, 18, 87, 255. And that's how you translate a, any number into binary. Now, the bigger the number you get, the more convoluted and complicated it can get. But ultimately, this is what the computer understands, and this is why this relationship is just, it's necessary to understand. You don't have to really do a lot of binary math, but it's, it's necessary to understand. Sometimes you have to do a lot of binary math, but uh, there are tricks, but we'll, it's a little outside of the scope of this video. We're just gonna move into the next numbering system that I wanna talk about, and it is going to be octal. I know some of you are going, wait, o octal? Yes, octal. It is a base eight numbering system. So the digits that you're using are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it ends with seven. The place values are also kind of interesting. So you have the ones place, you have an eights place, and since it's a base eight, the next one is gonna be eight times eight is 64. 64 times eight is 512. And then it's 4096. And since we're only dealing with numbers up to 255, we didn't have to go that far, but I just wanted to show you. Uh, but that's the place values, and this keeps exponentially increasing at in multiples of eight, or in exponents of eight. So let's go ahead and translate our numbers into octal. Now we could do it from decimal to octal, but since this whole thing really is boiling around about binary and computers, we're gonna translate from binary into octal, because I think it's, it's nifty and it's uh, intriguing how it works. So with octal, because it's base eight, we know we go zero through seven. So if we wanted to translate binary into octal, we literally will start with, to find the first octal digit, this place value here, it's gonna be between these three bits, one, two, and four, because one, 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 is seven, which would be the first digit, and then everything beyond that is the next digit. So what we're gonna do is gonna segment out this first three digits in binary, these first three bits, and we're gonna translate that, and we're gonna translate that into octal. So we know this one is two, because it's two. So our place is two. These ones both are going to be seven. because as we can see in binary, this is two, this is seven, seven, and since it's the ones column, it's really easy. We move over to the next one, you're like, well, that's gonna be a little trickier. In reality, it's not. We're just gonna separate out the next three bits, and we're gonna translate it, not on these numbers, but on these numbers, because again, it's still zero through seven. This place value, while it's the eights column, it's still numbered one through seven. So here, it's gonna be two, two, and seven. Now I'm doing all three numbers and we'll get all of them at the end at the same time. And then for here, you're like, wait a minute, there's only two bits there, not three. Well, all we really have to do is pad a zero. So we're just gonna add a zero to the front. Doesn't change the number, but we can still look at the same thing and we can see how this, uh, this, this is unique across the board here. So we're gonna do zero, it's gonna be one, and it's gonna be three. So now that we have our octal number, we know that this is 18, this is 87, and this is 255, numerical value equivalent, but this is how they're represented in octal. Now we can also just translate this from decimal to octal, and it's, it's the same, same concept. We take the eights values, same thing as decimal. Here you take you know, tens values, ones values, and you add them together, except this one's a little funnier because we have two eights, which is 16, and then we have two ones, which would be 18. Here we got 64, so we'll just do 64, and then it's gonna be plus eight times two, which is 16, and then add seven. And we end up with 87, you know, seven, carry the one, 87. This one, which is 255, and we know that. Uh, to figure that out, we take 64 and multiply it by three. So 64, and we're gonna multiply that by three, and we get 192. 
And then here, eight times seven. Anybody? Do I have to do everything? 56. And then one times seven is seven. And then we just add these across. So that's what, 199. 56, 55, octal. And now, the one you've all been waiting for, hex. Or hexadecimal. Now, hexadecimal is base 16. This one's a little trickier to kind of look at, but the translation from binary is very similar to octal, except we don't need an extra bit. We don't need nine bits to kind of figure it out because in order to get an octal, and or for an order for a computer to get an octal number, it would need to pad that zero and fill it out. But it also hasn't really been used uh, in CPUs, uh, have, you know, readily since. It's not like it's not used. It just it hasn't been utilized as a representation since we had like 12, 24, and 36-bit CPUs. And that's back in the the 50s and 60s. That's when it was pretty heavily used because in octal, four octal digits is a single 12-bit word, machine word. Hexadecimal is a little niftier because hexadecimal, like octal, you look at its base 16, this is base 8, so base 16 is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Zero through nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then it wraps around. So with hex, we've got a ones column, we have a 16s column, we have a 256 column, and then we have a 4096, which Kind of like this, 4096. But the interesting part about this one is it only takes four digits, four place values to get to 4096. Octal takes five. Now, that being said, we're going to go ahead and translate our binary into hex. And again, we're still dealing with these three values. But instead of using the third bit, we're going to move all the way over to the fourth bit. Because as you can see, this is 16. 16. So which means everything to the right of this place value is going to be these four bits. So we're going to start here, same thing as before. We're going to go with 2. This one here is going to be 7, except this one's going to change. So then we have 7. And here we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 15. So we know that is F. And then everything on this side, same thing. It's going to be 1. This one's going to be 1 and a 4, so it's going to be 5. And then this one down here is also going to be an F. So between these three numbering systems, so far hex is the most efficient. Well, you may not need this zero. You're going to need three characters to display the same number. This one takes two. Two, two, and three. Obviously, we're using eight in all of these. So every single hex digit is four bits. So two hex digits equals one byte. So if you look at a string, a massive string of hex digits, every two digits is one byte of information. So of course, because all of these are numbering systems and we're looking at the exact same information and it's just different ways of displaying the same information, but in a computer system or in a network, the most efficient way to display a number is generally the right way to go, but it needs to be universal across the board. So as you're displaying, a large quantity of numbers and large quantities of information that is really just a string of binary data, hexadecimal would be the most efficient way to display that. 
for every bite of information, this is what's really funny in my brain, for every byte of information that you're trying to display, so every two hex digits, it actually takes two bytes for the computer to display it. And you're asking, how is that? That kind of gets into the ASCII character set and how an ASCII character set is based on every character is one byte of information. And so you can take a number that is within that scope of one byte, zero to 255, and you can get an ASCII character. That's a capital letter, a lowercase letter, a number, a comma, a period, a space. All of these are part of the ASCII character set. Anyway, that's just an interesting piece of trivia. Hope this all was helpful. Numbering systems are crazy and awesome, and hopefully these will stay with you uh, as time goes on. Hope you found this helpful. You can always like and subscribe down below. Leave a comment. Also, check me out on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. You can find me on Twitch, all slash Deus Kane. And also check out my store, Dermal Armor. I've got a bunch of cool things that are in the mix, so just keep an eye there for, for new stuff that's going to be showing up very, very soon. Until next time, this is Kane University. My name is Kane, and I'm here to help you.